back. Over in Kenya, a strike is being carried out by colleagues of a doctor who was suspended for carrying out brain surgery on the wrong patient. It was not the only one to be punished. So were three other staff, the ward nurse, the theater receiving nurse, and anesthetist. More than 500 senior doctors in the biggest referral hospital have down tools demanding instead for the reinstatement of their colleague. They also want outstanding allowances for senior doctors to be paid, which have been owed since last year. The chairman of the doctors' union, Sami Oroko, says the suspension would do nothing to solve underlying problems at the hospital. The hospital says the patient in question did not die. Now, we're counting down to general elections in Sierra Leone as President Baiko Roma prepares to step down, having spent 10 years in power. A lot of residents think his tenure was not as impactful as they had hoped. Karoma is, however, now fielding Samora Kamara to stand as his ruling All People's Congress candidate. Another frontrunner in the country's election is former United Nations Undersecretary Kande Yumkela, standing for the new party, the National Grand Coalition. The party has capitalized on voter frustration with the country's lack of resources and development and endemic corruption. The candidate for the Coalition for Change party, Samuel Sam Sumana, founded the party after being sacked by President Koroma in 2015 and has pounded the government's record on corruption and poverty. Out of the 16 candidates standing for election, six made it to a major televised presidential debate last month. During the debate, the APC's Kamara attempted to distance himself from parts of Koroma's record on corruption and education, whilst Yumkela promoted his party as a unifying force for change. The National Grand Coalition, as we said, is a rainbow party. We've been very inclusive in bringing people in. We've preached only peace and inclusiveness. And so far, all our activities have been non-violent. And I want to pledge the people of Sierra Leone. We do not believe in violence. After it was engulfed by a brutal civil war for much of the 1990s, the country's dreams of an economic boom fueled by mining proceeds were dashed by a 2008 commodities crash. It was then hit by the deadliest Ebola epidemic in history, which killed some 4,000 Sierra Leoneans in 2014 and 2015. As soon as it did, the, the country lacked so many things. Job opportunities, one thing people are saying. But as for me, um, uh, we need we need uh, we need somebody who, who is going to invest in human resource management because we need they need to prepare the country for the future. But as for now, we are not we are not anywhere to get to the next um, face of the world. Many citizens, unsatisfied with the current situation, have high expectations for the new president. Residents in the Malian town of Menaka are fearing for their lives as security in the region deteriorates. Mali has been the scene of growing militant violence over the past year, perpetrated by groups linked to the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. Residents of the remote village of Inewelene in Mali say security has worsened in the region as residents have increasingly come under attacks from Islamist militants. The scrubland of West Africa's Sahel region has been the scene of growing militant violence over the past year. Some perpetrated by groups with links to Islamic State and Al-Qaeda who roam the vast desert stretches and cross international borders, often without detection. People have been living in fear for the past six months as their village has been vandalized, people killed or kidnapped by militants. They came and took him out by force and then accused him of being a thief. When they were taking him away, I held on to my husband so that they could let him go. But they pointed their guns at me and threatened me, saying if I don't let go, they would kill me too. Islamist groups seized control of Mali's northern territories in 2012 before being driven back by French-led military intervention. They have since regrouped and spread into the more populated center of the country, winning recruits by playing on local grievances such as rights abuses by the army. 
They came here and took everything, the car and the clothes. They left nothing. They killed the three people, then went to the local stores. They broke and vandalized everything and stole all the merchandise, as well as money, and left. The Tuareg militant group of Azawad Salvation Movement, a political and military movement, has decided to step in and provide protection for civilians. Its members have been conducting patrols in Menaka as well as in areas between Niger and Mali. They come to the villages, vandalize stores, kill and take civilians as hostages. These are not regular bandits, but mafia. That's why we have been hunting them down and tracking them. Islamist militants have launched increasingly frequent attacks on civilians, Malian troops and UN peacekeepers in the center of the country in recent months, expanding their reach beyond their stronghold in the desert north. We end the program on a sweet note in Ghana, the world's largest cocoa producer, which grows most of its produce for the export market. With more and more people consuming chocolate in Africa, some entrepreneurs in the country are taking advantage of this to promote Ghana's chocolates. Aqua Obenwa Donka makes chocolates from organic local source cocoa in Ghana's capital, Accra. She is one of a few trained chocolatiers in the country who are carving out a niche for themselves with an aim to promote chocolates made at home in a market that is dominated by foreign brands. Aqua started her company, Decocraft, in 2013 with an initial capital of $1,000. Her handmade chocolates come in different shapes and sizes and also come in custom-made designs. We make chocolate from the cocoa liquor. We don't have enough machinery to start processing chocolate from the cocoa beans. So we buy already grinded cocoa beans, which is called cocoa mass, from another company in Tema. So when we come here, we process it, and then we make chocolate bars and fill chocolates. When I talk about fill chocolates, they are the tiny ones that has sometimes caramel, peanuts, cornflakes in them. So we make both the bars and the filled chocolates. Aqua says Ghana is capable of adding value to its cocoa and in turn reap more benefits instead. After processing the chocolate liquor, she adds flavors and ingredients like nuts and other ingredients to produce a variety of bars. The entrepreneur, who is also a communication design graduate, says her products don't have artificial additives and preservatives usually found in chocolates in the market. We use the actual cocoa actual cocoa butter we don't substitute it for vegetable fats we use a pure cocoa butter so you get a creamy chocolate which is also healthy because we are using the natural things or the actual cocoa products and not substitutes decocraft also specializes in cakes and pastries the company supplies chocolate flavors for guests at weddings parties and corporate events and on that chocolatey note, we end today's show. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.